All right. All right, here we go. All right, welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this week for another installment of Ask Epic. We, we meet every week to discuss all things epic, and boy, do we always have a lot to discuss, and we have a lot of great things to discuss. We always want to provide new to epic families and returning families a place to learn about everything about epic. Well, some things, right, They're Ashley? <laughs> um, but it's just your opportunity to ask questions as you can and, and just learn as much as possible today, and we have a great great opportunity today to ask some guests a lot of great questions. My name is Carla Smitherman and I'm with the Epic Development Team. Hi everybody and I'm Ashley Brown and I'm also from the Epic Development Team. We're happy to be here with you today. Um, today we're going to be continuing our conversation about some clubs and organizations. I think this is maybe our third um, webinar covering different programs or different clubs. Uh, there's no shortage of them at Epic. So this is kind of an ongoing series. So we're excited to, to do that some more today. Um, and if, if you have questions or comments, whether it's for Carla and myself, or if it's for any of our guests, um, please drop those in the chat box. Um, we will address all questions as they come through on that chat box. If you do have something that maybe you um, would like more one-on-one -on -one help with something, or you just need something a little more in-depth, um, I will put our team's email in the chat box and you can just send us an email and we will get you taken care of that way. Yes, absolutely. So, okay, we have started a tradition of, of obtaining tips from our guests and we all try to give our tips because we want to have great outcomes this year. We want our families and students to have a wonderful, successful year. So uh, this week is no different. So I'm going to start off with asking our guests um, to give us one tip for our families to uh, get us started for this year. What would you what would you say would be a great tip for success for our families? I'll start with Gianni. Give us a tip for success for our families today. I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I am an epic parent as well, and I did not realize how many resources were available to epic students and their families until I started working for epic. Um, and this is our third year as a as an epic parent. Um, so yeah, I, I would say if there's any questions or you think of something or you need help with something, ask um don't be afraid because there's there's a, a resource available for every need and it's very impressive uh, all the stuff that epic has to offer that is an outstanding one and we do have a lot of great resources i love that one okay thank you very much okay jessica how about you give us a tip um i would say uh, so my nephew is an epic student and um the first year he was doing the one-to-one -one model and it was during the pandemic and so he felt kind of really disconnected. And that second year we started going to field trips that Epic offers and doing different in-person events. And that really made a difference for him. And I noticed his like motivation and his willingness to do the work just really went up. So for our family, I think those in-person opportunities really made a huge, a huge difference. All right. That's awesome. I love that. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Jessica. I love that. How about you, Adrian? Give us I your tip have to emphasize on Gianni's tip. I mean, it was such a good one. And honestly, please feel free to reach out. Don't ever feel isolated. We are here for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, ideas, just I feel like I've heard so many times, wow, I didn't know that was offered or I didn't know that was an option. Please, please, please feel free to reach out and just we're here to help all of you. Oh, wow. That is a great one. Communication, communication. I think we Absolutely. keep hearing that week in and week out and utilization of resources. Those are all great tips. So thank you all. I think I have a tip. I'm going to stray away because of the weather. OK, how many of you all are enjoying this wonderful weather right now? I know I am. Um, <laughs> I know. Right. Hands, hands up. Uh, so I think I want to go ahead and just tell our families, enjoy this weather. Um, and tell students, take that computer. I mean, OK, I know it's technology. I get that. Um, but consider the elements. We know we have Oklahoma storms that come in uh, at any minute. We know we have Oklahoma sand and uh, wind. So keep all of that in mind. So protect your technology. But take that laptop outside and 
maybe uh, listen to have a Zoom meeting outside. Just, you know, change your surroundings sometime. Maybe that will give you a little bit of, of different uh, feedback and give you give your mind a break, a little a little brain break. Uh, so that's my tip for today. Ashley, can you think of anything else? Um, you know, I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what Jessica said. I think maybe that's something we haven't talked about as much, but um, I think uh, what really makes or breaks a student's experience is how plugged in they get, in my opinion. I see students really flourish once they find an, a way, whatever it is. And like we've shown over our webinars, there are countless ways to plug in at Epic, you know, whatever works best for you, but find a way to plug in somewhere um, and give students those opportunities to um, grow and find ways to connect with others, because I think that really can make your experience at Epic and, and, and help you to, you know, have a great year. Um, so that would be my tip is really just like what Jessica said, plug in at however you can. I like that. Connect and build your community. That's awesome. Well, if anybody wants to in the chat box, give us a tip. We might read it for us. So if you have a suggestion for us, maybe we'll read it to the, to everyone in a few minutes and uh, let us know if you have a tip for success. But anyway, go ahead, Ashley. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'd love to hear any tips that you guys have, because I know we have some experts here at Epic, some veteran parents that I know would have some great, some great insight for us. I'd love to hear it. Um, so diving in today, um, we're talking to, we're talking about with our multicultural departments, and we've got some other things too, but uh, Carla and I were just talking about this, that, you know, we love at Epic, we are you know, the largest or one of the largest school districts in the state, um, which is really great because that means we just have so many different um, families, different nationalities, different cultures that are coming into our school, which, um, you know, we really see as such a value. Um, we really celebrate those differences of our students and we want families of all backgrounds and all cultures to feel welcome with us and appreciated. Um, you know, we believe that multicultural Goodness gracious. Every time I start trying to get that one out, I tongue tie it. Multiculturalism. Uh, we feel like that really promotes the integration of different cultures and it fosters an exchange of ideas and perspectives. And, you know, we talk about it Epic that we want to create um, a student that's well-rounded. We're not just talking about getting your diploma. We're talking about creating a student that's got um, value out in the real world, right? That's got uh, unique perspectives and ideas. And so we really love that we can offer that here at Epic. Um, so yeah, and I wanted to share, you know, Carla, you, you've always got cool tips to share. And so I thought today we might could share some couple little quotes that um, we think are really important and really beneficial for our families. Um, and the one that I thought about was from Stephen Covey. And then it says, our strengths lie in our differences, not in our similarities. And so, you know, at Epic, we really feel like that's true. You know, we're stronger um, because of our diverse population. And we really love to find ways to foster that and grow our students. Yeah, that's right. Ashley and I have been talking about this and how exciting this meeting, this webinar was going to be this week because I we do believe this is putting Epic on the cutting edge. Probably just not just for Oklahoma, really for the nation because it's it, for us we see that we are like she mentioned valuing and embracing uh, 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 just diversity. So one of the things we thought about was that students are flourishing within Epic and we're committed to cultivating the empathy and fostering profound understanding of diverse cultures among them. Our aim and is to equip them with skills and knowledge necessary to navigate and thrive in an ever-evolving global marketplace. I know um, working with high school students for many years, they always talk about equipping your students for an, a global marketplace. And what a better way that we have, you all are gonna talk about a little bit later, starting from the younger, groups and beginning to expose them at a younger age to diversity. Um, and we're recognizing in today's interconnected world, success extends beyond academic excellence. It hinges on the ability to connect with people from various backgrounds and perspectives. So by immersing our students in the study of different cultures and encouraging them to engage with diverse ideas, um, we're basically empowering them to transcend the boundaries of their immediate surroundings. So I can just say that, again, we're just profoundly excited about today and we're looking forward to this great webinar to talk to you all about what Epic has to offer with our multicultural uh, activities. So we'll go ahead and get started. 
Yeah. And so I haven't, we haven't introduced you guys yet. So I apologize. We kind of got, we get all excited, get talking. Um, but I do want to introduce, we're joined by Jessica, Adrian, and Gianni. They're going to tell us more about the programs they offer. Thank you so much for being here today. I know um, middle of the week, everybody's always busy and we're just so grateful that um, you guys are willing to be here and take time out of your day. Um, do you mind maybe just each of you taking turns to introduce yourself and tell us what your role is at Epic? Uh, we could start with you. Adrian. Absolutely. My name is Adriana Arellano, and I'm the Hispanic Program Specialist here at EPIC with the Multicultural Department. Um, so our role here, we essentially, we have, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in a little bit, is HSO and JHSO, which are the student organizations, the Hispanic student organizations, and also the Cultural Explorers Club. Um, but essentially, we're just here to provide resources for students, parents, teachers, principals, anybody alike, just provide them with um, some resources. Uh, and yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Gianni? Uh, my name is Gianni Cantor. I am the other uh, Hispanic program specialist here at EPIC. Um, like Adrian said, we are here uh, to help students and their families um, kind of point them in the right direction if they have questions or need extra resources and also, um, you know, bring some cultural exploration um, and give students the opportunity to connect with one another um, and learn more about their culture and uh, other Hispanic cultures because there's there's a lot of them within the Hispanic uh, communities. So we're excited um, for this school year, for sure. Thank you so much. And Jessica. Hello, my name is Jessica Ponder. I am our multicultural coordinator. So multicultural programs, we have our Hispanic programs. You just met our two coordinators. We have Native American programs. And then I am anything else that would fall under multiculturalism that is not those two things. So I, um, our student body, all the diversity, I'm there to work with them, with the families and just be a resource and a support. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're really glad to talk with all of you today. Um, I know when Carla and I were kind of doing a little bit of our background research on what you guys offer, we were like, wow, we've got a lot to talk about here. There's a lot to cover. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, I wanted to kick off um, talking with you, Jessica, about Model UN. I know this is something that you've been working really hard on. And um, I think we have a lot of students that are very excited about it. Um, students want, it's something that students want to have, right? Those high school students that they want this experience of Model UN. Um, and so could you tell us more about what Model UN is for anybody that doesn't have any previous experience with it? And then how you think this program's, how it's going to play out in our, you know, unique environment being that we're a virtual school. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I've been going, we've had um, some epic expos and I've gotten to speak to different families in person and I let them know about our organizations. And quite a few times students say, oh, I saw that on this TV show. Ooh, I want to do that because I saw it on this TV show or that TV show. So there's excitement, but not necessarily a lot of clarity of what it is. Um, and so what it is, is it's an opportunity for students to really practice their public speaking, a lot of critical thinking skills, research skills, and um, students will be debating real world issues but they won't be debating as themselves. So I wouldn't go and debate as Jessica Ponder. I would be debating as a country. You represent, you're basically an ambassador for that country, representing that country and working with different countries to reach resolutions. Awesome. Well, that's great. Yeah. I remember um, I did, what was it? Model UN. Uh, when I was in junior high, we had like a junior version of Model UN and I got to participate in that. It was so fun. It was, it was a great, it was, you know, for me, I felt like what was so cool about it was that you get to work on so many different skills in Model UN. You know, you're doing research, you're doing public public speech and debate. Um, you're learning about almost, it's almost similar to getting ready to learn about, you know, how to present like present yourself professionally so a little bit of that like career preparation of like you got to dress the dress the part and you know how to speak professionally and so um really I think it's so great that we're able to offer this um and I don't think you've said this yet what um grades are eligible to participate I'm sorry if you already said that I did not so it's open to all students in sixth through twelfth grade um, and just as you said, it does have that professional aspect to it. So it is a, it is fun. It's going to be fun, but it is also a competition. 
So there will be two um, virtual competitions that we'll do this year where we're competing with students around the country and around the world that will also be representing different countries. So when we come to Model UN, we're, we're coming to have fun, but we're coming to learn and to work hard. We do want to represent um, our countries to the best of our abilities and, and give it our best shot during our two in-person competitions. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm sure uh, virtual, virtual oh, competitions. Sorry. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure, you know, you've seen like some of our other um, different uh, sports like esports or some of our other organizations that have gone into these competitions. Epic has always managed to uh, perform really well. And I have high expectations for you guys. I think that you will also do such a great job. So I'm excited about that. Could you um, speak a little bit on time commitment? I know that's something, especially for our older kids, they're you know how it is. They're busy, lots of work to do. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what their expectations would be there? Yeah. So this is um, one. Of, this is our only organization that meets twice a week. We're meeting on Mondays and Wednesdays from three thirty to four thirty, um, and it's because it's a lot of skills to obtain to get us ready for those competitions. So it is really important that those that join the team are able to meet us on both Monday and Wednesday, and understanding that there may be some work outside of that time. Because as you said, it takes research, it takes writing the speech that you're going to give, it takes all of that. So it is um, a time commitment, but a fun time commitment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you're a student that has an interest in those things, that's something you're look, you're excited to do it, right? You're going to make it happen. And so um, I think this is going to be so great for our kids. Um, could you tell me if, how how can students sign up and is there a deadline for signing up? So we will officially kick off on October 2nd, um, and we will actually have, we're partnering with um, Best Model UN, and they will be leading our Monday session. So we will have a Model UN coach that'll come in and really give us some skills to really help set us apart, really help us teach how to do Model UN, how to really be able to come as a new school and compete at a level that that will get us in those competitions and, and get us to be able to be a part of it. And then Wednesday is kind of where we'll work to refine those skills that we're learning. So um, you can sign up for that on the website at epic.com. All of our student organizations are listed, or you can just email me, jessica.ponder at epictarterschools.org. Awesome. That's great. Um, and I will um, provide a link for, cause I've, I've got, I think I've got the link for your sign up page. So I'll drop that in the chat here in just a moment. Um, okay. And then I know you said, you said that the competition is virtual. Is that right? That is correct. Two virtual competitions this year. Are there any in-person commitments or is it all going to be virtual? This year will all be virtual. Awesome. Well, that's great because I mean, you know, the it that's easier because you can more people can hopefully participate if it's all virtual. So that's wonderful. Um, and tell me what in your own personal opinion, what benefits do you think this program will serve for students that get involved? Why should they want to? Well, I think they're going to really learn a lot about collaboration, cooperation. You have your ideas. There's different ideas. You really have to come together to talk about these really serious global affairs, no, in a way that is mature and responsible. So I think that's a, that's a really great life skill to obtain. Um, also for those that might be interested in college, uh, Model UN, you have that opportunity in college, scholarships, participating even beyond high school. So I think that it's really opening a world that goes even beyond Epic in the future. Yeah, absolutely. All about creating those future ready in demand graduates. I and mean, that's what I mean, a lot of what you're doing in Model UN is just developing those skills that are going to make you um, in demand when you go, go whatever you do past high school. Um, they're giving you those great life skills. So that's I can't wait to see what you guys are up to and check in and see how the program has grown and changed next year. So I think it's going to be so great. Um, OK, the next thing that you and I talked about, Jessica, and I was really excited about this, was your book club or your book study with Alton Carter. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that and what it is? Yes. So Alton Carter, he is a local Oklahoma author. He has a book called, he has various books, but the one that we're going to read in our book club is called The Boy Who Carries Bricks. It talks about his time in the foster care system. And so we'll spend six weeks discussing that book. 
Um, Alton will be joining us in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa for a Meet the Author opportunity. So those that are in the club, they'll get to read his book. They'll get to ask questions related to the book, related to publishing a book in general, becoming an author, any of that. He'll be available for our question and answers. Um, and then the second six weeks of the program, students are actually going to write their own story. And we will take those stories. Alton's publishing company is going to partner with us. And we will create a epic student stories book that is going to be available. So I think that's going to be really um, a lot of students have said, oh, I want to be a writer. I want to be a writer. This is your opportunity. It is going to be a published book that's going to be available. So. Wow. I mean, I don't, I just, yeah, that got me so excited because I think, you know, not many time, not many students get an opportunity to kind of peek into what that process is like. Someone could say, oh, I love to write. I'd love to be a writer, but you just no, never really get to find out what the process is like. So this is not only is it great because they're going to read an amazing book and get to meet with an author, but they're going to have an opportunity to look into what is this process like and, and is it attainable for me? And I don't know, that just sounds so neat. I really, I just, just think back to when I was a teacher, like I would have been like busting down your door to get my students signed up for this because I think it's so great. Like I'm trying to sign up myself, baby. We'll see. <laughs> if you see my name on there, don't, don't, don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> on this you, and up list. you and I both might have an alias on this one, Ashley. Right, exactly. <laughs> we'll just pose as, as you know, some sophomore and sophomore uh, students and we'll just be in the background. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So uh, I don't know. I don't think we've talked about this. Is there what grades are eligible to sign up for this one? So this one is also open to sixth to 12th graders. Um, it's going to be 12 weeks. So this one starts September 26th. And we encourage to sign up ASAP because you do want time for the book to arrive before we start the, the book portion, which starts on September 26th. Um, and let me, this one meets, so our sixth through eighth graders will meet on Tuesdays from 10 to 11. And then our ninth through 12th graders will meet on Tuesdays from 11 to 12. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so that's neat that you're going to split it up with your high school students versus your middle school. So that the kids are kind of getting to be with their peers. So I like that. Um, okay. And then let's see, you, you kind of went over this, your time commitment. We just talked about the meetings and you said it runs for it's 12 weeks, correct? correct. Okay. 12 weeks. And then is this something that you see, is it just going to be this one semester or do you, do you think it might be something you run again in the second semester? We would like to run again in the second semester. Yeah. Okay, we awesome. Want to create a nice um, memory of our epic student story. So the students from first semester and second semester are going to combine in that book. So the more the merrier because we have a nice forever memory if we, we get those students signed up. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited for that. Um, okay, and we just talked about your starting, gosh, in a week. So people need to get signed up right now, but you still can. So it's not too late. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna drop all these links here in just a minute um, for everybody for the different signups. Um, I'll put those in the chat. Um, okay, and so, oh, this was my, my last question I had for the book club. Um, I know that students in this are going to be writing. Would you say, though, that anybody that wants to sign up, do they need to be like a pretty experienced or strong writer or do you feel like this is going to be open and, and possible for any for students of all levels writing wise so definitely all students are welcome those six weeks the second six weeks we're going to be diving into where each student is and revising your version so whatever level you're at and whatever supports you need we're going to be working together to create your story so um beginner advanced already got, I have a couple of students that have said, oh, I already have a book published. Amazing. Wow. Bring those stories, bring that experience, and let's just all work together to get our stories on paper. Wonderful. Yeah. They're going to be able to learn from each other. That's awesome. Um, all right. So thank you so much, Jessica. I'm going to switch gears now and talk to Gianni and Adrian about the Hispanic Student Organization. Uh, would you guys mind telling us more about what your club does and who's eligible to participate? Yeah, so the HSO and Junior HSO are student clubs um, designed to explore different Hispanic countries and their different cultures. Um, it will give students the opportunity to learn about different types of foods and music and dance and um, have the chance to listen to different dialects that are found in these different countries. 
we will talk about influential people and everyday heroes that um, have Hispanic heritage and how life experiences have inspired them to make a difference and affect change. Um, we are planning on showing students recipes from different countries, which I'm excited about. <laughs> and um, as well as like, you know, in a, a small virtual cooking class uh, and students will have the opportunity to taste those flavors from the different countries. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that sounds fun. I love the idea of a cooking class. I'd like to to be there for that one. I'll be the, um, if there's a judge for tasting the food, I would sign up for that part. Not much of a cook, but I can definitely try new things. I love that. Um, okay. And so I know that uh, you mentioned that you guys have a junior club as well. So could you tell us more about what grades are eligible to participate in this club and then a little about your junior club? Okay. Yeah. So the club is open to everyone. Um, and the junior HSO is from grades six through eight, and the HSO is high school students, so ninth through 12th. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. And then the website, I saw on the website that you guys have tried to plan different events or field trips. Do you have anything planned yet for this semester? Uh, yeah, we have some field trips that we've been planning and community activities that are already out there, and we're pushing out to our students. Um, for example, last weekend, we had Fiestas Patrias in Oklahoma City, where um, Epic actually sponsored the children's section. And um, we had high school, Epic high school volunteers that came out and helped us give out the wristbands for the kids. It was a lot of fun. There was music, there was dancing, there was um, lots of food. Um, so that was fun. And we're also talking with um, the Oklahoma Historical Society in Oklahoma City, and they will be um, hosting museum tours uh, in the area open to students. And um, we're also planning a potluck to give students the opportunity to bring in their favorite dish and um, all, all the students will be able to try all these different, you know, foods from different countries. Love that. That's so exciting. Um, gosh, what was I, I just had a thought on my mind of a question. Oh, do you guys have, um, do you guys have set meeting times every week or do you, is it just based whenever you have events planned or what is your meeting schedule like? Uh, junior HSO meets 11 to 12 and HSO meets one to two on Wednesdays. Gotcha. So every week and can students, mm -hmm. um, can they just kind of join in whenever they have a chance to, or is that something that you like to see them every single week or, or is it pretty um, flexible? It's pretty flexible. Yes. It's, awesome. you know, uh, just a learning opportunity and having fun and connecting with other students, um, just opening their community, um, so they yeah. can grow their community. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. I'm all for it. And anything where we're and we're bringing food into it too. Yes, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> um, okay, and so if we've got students that are interested in participating, um, what is the way that you would recommend for them to sign up? Um, on the Epic website, uh, they can go under student organizations and click the link and there's an intake form and then it sends their email to us and then we can go ahead and do calendar invites and any updates that we have and plans we'll communicate through there. Awesome. So I'm going to here in just a second, I'm going to just post the link to our organizations page. And then um, whether it's, whether it's our HSO, or if it's any of the clubs that Jessica has mentioned so far, you'll find them on that page and you click and there's the sign up link. So thank you so much. Yeah, very good. Okay. Well, I know that a lot of families are always looking for ways to get their student reading and uh, what better way to get your young person reading to join a book club. So I love this idea of the Cultural Explorer Club, which focuses on our young people, the elementary students, and just uh, really plugs them in to various clubs and organizations. And specifically with this club, there's reading involved in a fun way. So someone, Jessica, you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about that or anyone else can, can explore and give us some feedback on exactly what the Cultural Explorer Club is. So I will talk to you a little bit more about the Cultural Explorers Club. Um, it's basically a Hispanic children's book club that's celebrating the Hispanic culture's rich diversity and traditions. 
So we're going to learn more about the Hispanic culture through stories, vibrant traditions, and creative crafts. At the beginning, we're going to follow along as we read um, enchanting stories highlighting the beauty of this heritage, and it's going to be written by a Hispanic author or about an Hispanic author. Um, it also might be a bilingual book that's written in both English and Spanish, but essentially, we're just going to introduce this story and then after introduce a craft that's inspired by the story that was just read. So it's just a, a great way to learn more about the Hispanic culture. That is awesome. What grades can participate? This is going to be for all students in pre-K through fifth grade. So we want to open it up to all of the, the younger students. That is great. I love that. So how long is the program? Is it first semester and second semester? Or are we just... We're actually going to be offering this year round. Nice. Very good. I'm kind of like Ashley now. I think I... I would have loved to have had this, you know, participating in this last year with my students. If I'm a student or a family member, how do I get my student involved and engaged in it? How, how is the sign up? Tell me about the sign up. So kind of how we met, Ashley mentioned earlier um, on the student organization page, it's going to be linked on there under Cultural Explorers Club. We have sent out emails to students and families of pre-K through fifth. Um, if you happen to miss that, then you can still locate it under the student organizations tab, click the link and just enter your information and we will send you the Zoom. It's going to be via Zoom um, every Monday at 1 p.m. And I just wanted to make the point whether you're Hispanic, your family's Hispanic, or you just want to learn a little bit more about the Hispanic culture, everyone is welcome. And we just, we hope to see you guys there. Um, I've had a few parents ask, is this something that I have to be committed to every week? Can I join in maybe one week and then in a few weeks? Absolutely. Every week, it's going to be a different story um, and it's going to be a different craft. I will email the parents beforehand for materials for the craft. It should be just simple household items, things that you most more than likely will have lying around the house. But I will, I will send that out beforehand. And yeah, we're just excited about the club and we Good. hope that everyone can can join. Wonderful. I, I can't imagine a family not embracing this opportunity, participating, reading and involving a craft. Yes, that that sounds like so many families would love that. And then, of course, the best part, learning about the Latino community and culture. So I love that. Do you have anything else you might want to add about it to, you know, tell us anything else? What is the first book? Have you all already gotten the first book uh, idea? Out we have yet. a lot of great ideas. We have some parents that have mentioned some, so there's so many to choose from. So it's just going to be a surprise for the first one, okay. but I'm sure it's going to be a great one. I just tried to get it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> there are some amazing <laughs> books but uh, out there. So well, thank you so much for that. And I know that our families are going to benefit. And like I said, I love that we're starting younger to expose our families to as many different cultures as possible, specifically the Latino communities. That's wonderful. So I will move now to Black Student Organization that um, we have uh, begun with, with EPIC. And I just have a one fun fact that I thought I would mention. A lot of families don't know about this, that Oklahoma uh, is set apart because of our wonderful leader, Claire Looper, who is a civil rights leader. She was one of the first sit-in, uh, who led one of the first sit-ins in the country, uh, the United States, back in the 50s. And everyone else uh, followed suit, although we don't get the credit for it. So <laughs> the mayor of Oklahoma City has been leading a charge to get that change in the history book. So I just thought I'd give that little fun, interesting fact out there uh, uh, as far as the African-American community is concerned. And of course, our national history and how Oklahoma has actually contributed. Uh, but anyway, way, so I really am excited about the Black Student Organization and I uh, just, you know, want to get out there. What ages can participate? Um, first, I would like to say I'm glad that you mentioned that uh, that note about Clara Looper. My aunt was in the sit-in. She was, I think she said she was eight at the time. She was one of the youngest ones. And so when I get to listen to her stories of what it was actually being there in person as it was happening, absolutely incredible. So um, yeah, Oklahoma has such a rich history. And this organization is open to all students and any students in sixth through 12th grade. Um, we have, I'll, I'll tell you the times, our sixth graders, sixth through eighth graders meet on Wednesdays from two to three and our ninth through 12th graders meet on Mondays from two to three. That's awesome. 
So what kinds of activities will you have? And tell me how students can benefit from these activities. So I think I've led um, organizations at Epic for the last three years. And I think that one of the things that they really enjoy the most are, I tend to bring a lot of interesting topics. I don't, um, in whatever group I'm leading, I tend to bring things that maybe you won't find in your everyday class or textbook. So they really like learning things they didn't know before. Uh, that That's something that they always make note of, really appreciating. And also they like making friends. Um, that's one of the top things at the end when we evaluate this organization, has it been a success or not? the friendships they make is always at the top. So um, we do meet virtually, all of our meetings meet over Zoom. But last year we started meeting in person monthly, having events around the state of Oklahoma, just to give students that opportunity to meet in person if they are able. And that really made a big difference for a lot of our students and families. They really enjoy that because not only are you getting to interact with other people from the group, but we're going to new and exciting places around the state and learning different things about our great state. So it's always fun. That is awesome. Well, let me know, how can we join? <laughs> give us an idea. Give me a, let me know. How can I join? How can I sign up? How yes, can so this will be the same. They can go on the, um, on the Epic website, or you can always email me if you prefer to email me personally. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that are coming up or anything, and I can send the link to you directly. Okay, well, that is awesome. It sounds like building connections and building community, again, is what we really want to embrace with EPIC. And again, sometimes we get isolated, right, with EPIC. And this is another way to bridge that gap. So we really enjoy that and love that thought. And then, of course, we're overcoming um, the thought of knowing, getting to know other people and diversity and enjoying embracing that as well. So just in, thank you so much for bringing Black Student Organizations to EPIC and your hard work with that. So we appreciate you. Yes, we had, it's our students. We had a very, we had lots of students requesting for the last couple of years. So, um, you know, we like to listen to our students, to what they're wanting, what they need. And we create our organizations based off of student interest and, and student requests. So I'm really happy when I'm able to meet a need that has been asked about. Yeah, it's I think I feel like we've heard that um in the last few weeks with different um people from all over Epic that they say the same thing. They they take what families or students are telling them and then that's how they create what they're going to be doing. And um I just I think that's so great. You're so responsive and again like we've talked about at the beginning, it's finding ways for kids to find connection because even students that go to, you know, a traditional brick and mortar school, um it can be hard for students to find a, a way to connect. Even even in brick and mortar school. Um, and so I think that Epic goes out of their way, goes the extra step to find ways for students to connect. And, and um, I would, I feel confident in saying that even though we're a virtual school and we're not in person, we find just as many, if not more and better ways for our students to get plugged in and find a community. And I, I would, I would, I'm, I'm definitely going to say that. I think that's true. And people can argue with me if they want, <laughs> but um, yes, thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to switch gears again. I just feel like we're like, boop, boop, boop all over the place, but we have so much to talk about, so we kind of have to. Um, okay, next we're going to talk about Story Express. This is another one I think is really special. Um, you know, I'm somebody that I was never sporty. I was never, I, you weren't catching me doing anything sporty or outdoors, okay? I was I was doing the more um, music and writing. That was more my thing, so that's why I get all excited about these ones. Um, but, you know, we know for students, not only, you know, writing, music, art, all of that, they're a great way for students to express themselves, to find community, things like that. But it also engages their learning um, in a way that speaks to them personally. And <clears throat> as teachers, we know that, or really anybody, a parent would know, students are going to learn better when they find ways to engage with content that speaks to them. And so everybody has something a little different. And I think that this is just another great way for students to really um, engage with what they're learning and also express themselves in a way that brings them, you know, that brings them happiness and that helps them to find community and all of that. So Jessica, will you tell me more about Story Express? Of course, yes. So Story Express is really for those creatives, like we said, maybe not so sporty and all of that, but are 
artists, poets, writers, singers, songwriters, photographers, whatever um, it is that creativity that's flowing. Um, Story Express is for you to find that voice, uh, rather you're already in touch with your creativity are not so much. You're still trying to figure out what is it, what's inside of me. Um, during these nine weeks, really what we're trying to do is just tap into what makes each of us unique. What can we offer that can only be offered by us and then create that rather by whatever means it is that you feel most inspired. Oh, that's awesome. And so, okay. So what do you think? So you said this program lasts for nine weeks. Um, what are students doing over the course of that nine weeks? So we have, I have kind of like a curriculum. I have topics that I, um, I will be bringing, we'll be exploring the art of self-expression, um, accessing their inner voice, um, really tuning into just different emotions and how they feel and how they can be expressed and, and things like that. Um, so really we're gonna be working on gaining our confidence and also uh, it can be very vulnerable, right? Not just creating work, but sharing what you create. So mm -hmm. also that step of not only are we creating, but we're sharing. So Story Express is gonna be one where at the end of this, we're gonna have an exposition where students will display their work. Um, and also it will, most likely join with the Alton Carter program, that book that we're creating of epic student stories. Um, it will be joined. So the stories from our Alton Carter group and the stories from our Story Express group will create just a epic student stories book. Oh, wow. That's so special. I love that. Um, okay. And so you said that's nine weeks. Um, do, and, and you said you have predetermined topics. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so can you tell us, um, how do you, how do you see students incorporating? I know we've talked about using art. How do you envision that? How can students incorporate art into this? So it's expressed in, in a lot of different ways. Um, because art is, it's a way, sometimes art doesn't need words, right? So it's a way where people can connect, um, but it's also so unique because we can look at the same art, we can see the same art and we can feel something totally different or see something totally different. And so it really gives us the opportunity to see similarities, see differences, um, but not only see those, but respect different points of views and different ways of interpretations and still having the confidence to say what I see or feel, even if it's different than what someone else does. So we're learning all of these kind of life skills but using art kind of as the means to learn it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, and then what grades, I, I don't think we've talked about this yet, but what grades can participate? This one is for our sixth through eighth graders. Wonderful, awesome. And then um, what about the, is there a deadline to enroll? So we start on October 4th, that will be our first meeting. Um, it's Wednesday, we meet from 10 to 11. So. Ideally before October 4th, but um, this one isn't as strict. We'd love to have you from the very beginning, but um, we'll still welcome a little bit later. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I like to get that out there. Cause I know for our teachers that watch that are, you know, wanting to get their kids plugged in, they always like to know when can I sign them up by, or how, how strict is the deadline? Teachers love to know that. And then you kind of said the time commitment it was just one, you said the one hour a week, but would you say there's any other commitments that they would need to think about if they were to join? So, um, they will be creating whatever it is rather, and it's completely up to them. It can be a poem. It can be a photo. It can be something they paint, something they draw. So they will need some creative time to make this piece that's going to be shared. Um, so we'll take like little times in our one hour, but not too much because we really want to be able to talk and share in that one hour. So they'll probably do their creation on their own time. Got it. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. I'm excited to see. I can't wait to hear. You'll have to share with us um, whatever you guys get ready to do your exposition where we really want to see kind of the fruition of everything. So thank you yeah. so much, Jessica. Yeah, Jessica, keep us posted. I think we may need to have a second meeting with you all to get, I guess, updates on all these amazing programs. And I want to see, I want to see pictures of all the smiles on the students' faces that experience these, these, programs and clubs and organizations, because there's going to be plenty of smiles. I can tell you that. Uh, but I, 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 anyway, I'm just I'm very proud of many of 
the activities and organizations that are represented and you are doing such great work. I just came so proud of all of you today. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, I can say I really am very, very proud of this organization and that is the Pride Group. I um, just really am excited about the, I think last year when I saw the Pride Group and the LGBT please excuse me for not saying the acronym right, LGBTQ community. Yeah, I got it out. Um, the celebrations um, that I saw online just made me very proud and excited that Epic had um, embraced uh, the, the, the community and was accepting and of our families and students that were represented. So it just really made me feel very proud of Epic. So I was really excited to talk with... Um, uh, you all today about this. Jessica, can you give us some feedback about what the organization does and some of the activities? Yeah, so I will say Pride has existed for three years, um, okay. and it's one that I've really gotten to watch grow. The first year, I think there were maybe about 58 students, maybe not even that. It might have been closer to 40, but um, the students get in and they like it and then they tell their friends and they tell their friends. And last year we had 139 um, in Pride. And so it's one that, and I have students that were there the first year, the second year, and they're back this year. So it's one of those ones that the students really get in and they feel connected. They feel like they find a place where they can be themselves, where they are understood, where there are adults that accept them and care about them. Um, I've had parents write me emails and say, my child is so much more confident since joining Pride. Like, thank you so much. I'm so glad this exists. And so um, it's it's one of those things where we just kind of talk. As from the first year, it was pretty much me leading everything, me teaching about what's happening in the community, what's happened in the past, what's happened here. And the second year, we started to have a few more students like, I want to share. Can I talk about this? Can I... And, and my goal this year is just more student-led initiatives. I love when they use their voice, when they are passionate about something, when they want to bring something to the table. Let's discuss this. Let's look at this. And so that's kind of my goal for each of our organizations. Um, and I'll just say Pride is open for 6th through 12th graders. Um, our 6th through 8th graders meet on Thursday from 2 to 3, and our ninth through 12th graders on Tuesdays from 2 to 3. And Pride is another one, just like our Black student organization. These run all year and you can join anytime. And these are very flexible. If you're not able to join, it's okay. Don't, you can miss, you can come when you're able. Um, students ask all the time, do I have to have my camera on? You don't. We love it if you do, we love it if you don't. You come just however you show up. You're welcome. Um, both of those organizations operate like that. That is wonderful. Now, do you have to be LGBTQ, LGBTQ to participate? Can you, uh, you know, and I just wanted to just throw that out there because yes, no. I, I think that a lot of families might uh, want their students to be exposed and, and to uh, get to know all families and all students. Yes, for sure. No, this is open to all students. So, um, and however, whatever, anyone is welcome. It's it's just another one where you're able to be who you are and just show up who you are, how you are, and learn about others. Um, I learn from these kids every week. <laughs> I love them so much because I learn new things. They learn from me. Um, I really, I, I love the group because that's what it is. It's about no one knows everything but we all know something. And so that's what we try to do, just bring what we know. And we want everyone to be able to do that. Not just um, people that belong to a certain group or a certain title or label. Everyone can come. That sounds wonderful. Well, I think with you at the helm, they, are, they stand to do great things. And um, I look forward to hearing some amazing activities that come from each group. And I love what you're saying about acceptance and feeling, you know, the inclusion and building community. And um, I know that these students are going to have great benefit from this. So thank you for what you're doing. And we appreciate all. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, it's been great. We had a lot to learn today as usual. Um, so many of our departments, they offer so much. And so I think that's great. And like we've talked about, you guys are very responsive to what um, families or students are, are interested in. And so I would just encourage all of those, um, every caregiver that watches this, you know, if, if you are interested in getting plugged in um, and you have, maybe there's something you'd like to see at Epic that um, you'd like our multicultural organizations to offer offer, uh, let them know because they, they want to hear from you and they want to uh, plan out, you know, their, their offerings based on what you guys want. So uh, communicate that with us. Um, I just wanted to ask before we, you know, kind of close out today, is there anything that um, you guys have going on that maybe you didn't get a chance to discuss today that you'd like to let, let our families know about Gianni or, or Jessica or Adrian? I will say when you look at the website, there's one other organization we didn't have time to discuss. It's called our Pin Pal Lessons. Um, as a multicultural organization, we do want one that deals internationally. And so that's one where students will learn with, we connect with classrooms around the world and we work on projects and discussions together with students in those classrooms around the world. So look on the Epic website for the Pin Pal Lessons and sign up if that sounds interesting to you. Thank you so much. Yes, Jessica, I totally, that one totally slipped my mind. And is that one on the um, the or the student organizations page? It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so that link that I shared earlier, you can find the pen pal group um, on there as well. Um, anything Gianni and Adrian that you guys didn't get a chance to mention yet? Or are you good? I think we covered everything on our side. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Um, okay. Well, that's great. Um, okay. Let's see here. Well, we're just really grateful that you guys um, joined us again. We love hearing about all the different things you are offering and we can't wait to see what comes next. Can't wait to check in on things later on in the school year. Um, what would you say is the best way for families to stay in the loop with what you guys have going on? Jessica, what would you say is the best way to stay in the loop? Um, we do our best to keep teachers updated through the Epic One system if teachers are checking us out. But, um, and if you happen to have a student that's in the organization, we're always letting them know. Sometimes that works well, sometimes it doesn't. But we're here. We, we love when parents reach out. We love, I love, and I'm sure my teammates do as well, mm -hmm. when families write and ask us questions and wanna be involved and wanna know. So please, 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 it is not a problem. It, we love it. Reach out, ask anything, ask for updates. I love to let you know if you want to know. Awesome. Great. Uh, Adrian, Gian Gianni, how do you guys feel like, is it, do you feel like you're, do you have a newsletter you send out or is it everything coming through email? What is your best way for families to stay in touch? The same. Um, basically we'll send information out through Epic One to teachers. We will have newsletters going out. Um, most important thing I would say that if you're interested potentially in the Cultural Explorers Club or any of the other student organizations, sign up. Uh, I will send out any information that I have to all of the individuals that have signed up. Um, and that's a great way to get that information, even if you potentially can't make the meeting or you might, you're not sure if like if this is something you want to commit to every single week, just sign up. We'll send you all the info your way. You're not, it's not like if you signed up, you must attend every single meeting. Just sign up. We'll send the information your way and pop in when and if you can. Awesome. Thank you so much. And our much. contact info is on that student organization's website as well. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, just shoot those emails our way. Perfect. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Well, and those of you that were watching with us, um, thank you so much for being here. If you still have questions about any of the programs that we discussed today, or really anything to do with Epic, um, that's what something that Carla and I do. We're here to answer families' questions, provide them with information about our school. So if you have further questions or need more information, um, or maybe you're thinking you'd like to enroll, uh, reach out to us. I just put our Carl and I's team phone number and email address in the chat box. So um, we would love to get one of our specialists um, with you and give you whatever you need so that you can make the best choice for your students. Yes, and we are so excited. This information you shared today, Ashley, let me tell all three of you this. It just makes me even more passionate about talking about Epic because I think we're just giving our families just amazing activities and ways to connect in community and just ways to set their families and students 
um, apart from the from the rest. So in a wonderful way. So again, I, we say thank you again, but keep up your hard work. Come back to visit us, share pictures and tell us all the great things that you're doing in the future, because we want to know and we want to share with our audience. So anyway, um, we're going to end with a quote with Maya Angelou, who is, as Ashley mentioned, one of her favorites. She's also one of mine. Um, she says, in diversity, there is beauty and strength. So we want to continue to promote diversity and Epic. And again, we applaud you all's efforts and thank you for everything you're doing. So join us next week. We're going to be talking about the learning fund. That's a hot topic <laughs> and it'll be a great one. So join us next week and we'll see you at with Ask Epic. See you Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.